Three, two, one, hit it. <laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you happen to be listening to another episode of the Non League Nosh. I am James, and as always, I am joined by my co host and probably bordering on my closest friends, I would have to say. Adam. Oh, James. Bordering. Mm. Bordering. bordering. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting on that fence, am I? <laughs> Such a um, kind, kind start. Yeah. Well, I thought I'd add that little bit in there just for, you know, just for niceties and whatnot. I say the non-league nosh, um, but tonight is just going to be a bit of a different style um, of podcast because we, we're just here to have a bit of a general chit chat, really. Um, we have yeah. got a lot of guests lined up for the next few shows, um, particularly over the next few weeks. We have lined up some absolute corkers. Um, it's exciting. Which, sorry? It's really exciting, isn't it? Yeah, they, they really are. And we will announce details in due course. But I just think what we'll do is we'll kind of stick with those guys being the uh, the, the, the football chat. And then for the Thursday show, which we're recording, which will be out on the, on the Friday, unless we have a guest, uh, what we're going to be doing is just having a bit of a chat about how we're finding things at the moment, just going through general life um, and really anything that's kind of taken our fancy at the moment and just talking, um, you know, about stuff that may be affecting you guys as well. If you want to get involved with some of the topics that we have, then, yeah, just um, let us know down in the comments. We'll read those out in future ones. But I like to think like of this, James, as our lighthearted piece for the listener. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's not really um, an agenda. There's not really anything that we particularly want to. Um, um, you know, there's urgent breaking news that we want to talk about. But yeah, as you said, it's more just a bit of a lighthearted chat, what we would do normally when we're messaging. Um, myself and Adam message each other every single day. So, you know, that's just yep. the kind of stuff that we would be messaging each other if we weren't talking about football, really. So, uh, right. yeah, hope you enjoy <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. Adam, how are you this evening anyway? Let's start off on that note. Yeah, very good. Um very good indeed. Like I've had a, a couple of uh good days again in the uh spending a bit of time in the garden doing a few bits and pieces. I don't like you can't not enjoy the weather at the moment. Like with everything else that's going on, the one thing you can enjoy is the weather, right? Yeah, that is true. It has been particularly today has been a glorious afternoon we took the opportunity to actually go out into the garden because what i'm finding and you probably found this right at the very beginning is that the time just flies incredibly quickly yeah when when you've got when you've got a young one like obviously mine my child now um he's four months old and he like you, you, you do like certain things, um, sort of like with him. Like you, sort of like you get him into a, you know, like these bouncers that yeah know, it takes about ten minutes getting me into the thing. He enjoys <laughs> it for about five, and then he wants to come out again. And you think, oh, okay, you know that that's that's occupied a few minutes. You look up at the clock, and half an hour has gone. You're like, how the hell did that just happen? It's the getting them in and out and they're preparing them for the activity, which takes more time than the doing itself, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. Because, like, I remember 100%. we had this like chair, this rocking chair thing that we had for Finlay. And it was good to get him in it. Uh, but all of the kerfuffle of handing him around and sorting him out and make sure he's oh. comfortable and everything. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, at times, what I'd give for those days to come back where I could just put him down and leave him for a little bit. Well, uh, this is this is the thing, like, today, um, and especially yesterday, he just did not want to be left alone. Like, normally, you could just, you know, put him in the corner of the sofa, and as long as you're doing something in front of him, he's occupied. As long as he can see you and he can hear you, then he's fine. Um, yeah. But yesterday, unless you were directly in his face making stupid noises and making him giggle or, you know, you were doing something to kind of occupy him. Constant he, attention. He constant crying. And that is probably been the only day during this whole process where I thought, I just need five minutes. Yeah. I've never I have never felt like that with him. Uh, I think though, I like, hand on heart, say that I've never felt that with him. But yesterday was the one day I was just like, 
do you know what? I really just want to just go and just sit in the bathroom for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I could confidently say, mate, you won't feel guilty about feeling like that. Um, because oh, no. like those moments come and I think like you, you look at like social media at the minute and everyone says, I just don't know what to do with my kids. Like I, I, I'm out of ideas and everything. Um, I think it's tricky. Like mine's three years old, so he's not in school, so he hasn't got like this program of homework and tasks to do. So, but I still feel like I've got some sort of duty to keep him like semi-educated as nursery would do as well. And I, I struggle mm. with that big time. Like you know, I'm thinking of arts and crafts and things to do with him. I mean, I'm, I'm by no means an artist whatsoever, but found myself carving up cardboard boxes and turning them into monsters and stuff like that just to keep him occupied uh like you know i'm teaching him to catch in the garden and stuff like that yeah yeah like just just little basic things which are like fun for us both to do um it kind of give you a bit of a respite in between the times when he is being at his worst shall we say yeah so with the news this today, which has been announced, because obviously we're recording this on the 16th of April, the news came out earlier on that, they, that they're going to be extending it for another three weeks. I don't really think it came as much of a shock, to be honest. I think if you, you know, if you know anything about or have any sort of brain cell about what's going on, you knew it wasn't going to be a quick, yeah. quick turnaround. But with the news of another three weeks, are you prepared for that? mentally well it's a difficult one I, I, i'm like mentally i think i'm struggling with it because you can't just go and do stuff um but mm-hmm. i knew i wasn't going to be going really out of the house for the next three weeks anyway because i'll still remain off work yeah. so like it's a bit of a double-edged sword for myself anyway because you know if i if i was in work my job is a key working job um but right. being off work i was never going to be in a position where i could be too heavily affected anyway um yeah so um at the moment like i'm finding that i don't even feel sort of comfortable or or confident leaving the house i was speaking to my neighbor uh earlier today uh he had to take his his car to the the garage and he was just saying how every single time he goes out he just feels like everything's a worry everything needs washing down like needs to make sure he has a shower straight away after he comes in if he's been out and everything else all that sort of paranoia almost that's being added to daily life um that, that's the bit i'm finding really stressful and it's just this invisible thing that if you want to do your absolute utmost to avoid um so, so are you um are you taking your are you doing your daily exercises and you do it are you doing it uh, absolutely not exercise? no absolutely no. not no i'm not taking advantage of going out daily I, I i've been out once a week i think since the whole lockdown thing um which is normally on a sunday uh, and i've gone to the same place for a walk each time because um, I'm, I'm we're finding that the the walk a day is actually helping us right from not only just like a physical side of it from just like a mental part of it as well because it just gives you that break away from being in the same room yeah all the time do you know what i mean yeah 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 i totally, totally get that um, but when whenever we're doing our walks we have the go- we have our going out outfits yeah so we get changed into that the moment yeah. we step back through the door again we change disinfect the yeah. buggy gets disinfected we have to wash our hands wash you know whatever the case and then you come back in as like you know as um as if you never left <laughs> yeah yeah and i suppose like some of my worry is like Obviously, when you've got a three-year-old, they run and touch and lick things, um, as I'm okay. sure anyone that's listening that has a toddler could uh, sympathise with. And yeah, I can't, Im- I can't imagine how anyone is coping with that because obviously, from my perspective, it's very easy. He's in a buggy; he can't do anything, so he just watches the world go by. <laughs> yeah, from yeah, that yeah, perspective, but yeah, yeah, I can imagine it's very tough. I'm sort of happier, like I said trying to uh, think of the activities to do and find things to entertain him at home and uh, burn off some steam around the garden and stuff if we can yeah are you in a i mean obviously i know this but are you in a position where during the day you could just go off on your own and do any sort of you know just go for a walk or you just you just don't feel comfortable doing that well say that um that that could change a bit so kate has to work from home now a couple of days a week oh okay Uh, so uh sort of for the next week or so so over the next week i'll see how things go yeah. um so just depending on if she gets a break and how things work out with things 
uh, yeah. like technology and that as long as that all gets set up she'll some something she can do from home so yeah. um there is opportunity i can't you know i can't say there's no opportunity no. where we are i just need to take that opportunity uh yeah. by the scruff of the neck a bit more i think and find the motivation to do it. i think that's the thing with all of this is um i think it's sapped a lot of people's motivation to do things yeah um, I, see, I see a lot of people either thriving on it and they've got nothing else to do so you see a lot of like instagram posts where people are doing exercises and that kind of stuff like that or it's the complete opposite yeah i i read a, a twitter post the other day where someone said that they they had just changed into their work clothes which was their dressing gown <laughs> um, and I, I think that's the slippery slope that I was getting into. It's like you're not changing and stuff like that, and then all of a sudden, like mentally, everything's a bit of a struggle. There's, there's no, your day doesn't have any breaks in it anymore. It just flows from one lot of dirge to another. Really, <laughs> you're yeah. in this endless cycle of like sleeping to to then eating through your free meals before you start sleeping again. Yeah. Um, rather than like you'd have those additional activities if you were, if you know if we weren't in lockdown maybe we'd have like you'd have your work to go to you might be going out seeing friends a couple of times a week um, you might just have some general errands to run a couple of nights where you just go and see family and stuff like there's all these little tasks that have all been taken away um, yeah. it does make things really tricky uh, yeah. really difficult to stay motivated and stay focused um, I've taken on a couple of things like to learn i don't know about you have you sort of learned any new skills or no no not at all if i'm being honest um it's not it's, it's it might sound weird to a lot of people but this kind of thing doesn't really affect me um i have always very much i've always been um a home comfort kind of person um i am at my happiest when i'm in my home and it, which you know is very odd considering the youtube channel that that i have and what kind of content i go out and record like from that yeah. side of things the social aspect of it is fantastic i really enjoy all of that but i am at my happiest when i'm at home when i'm at you know when i'm doing my own thing i think and i, I think to in a way like i think we probably were for a long while and then when finley sort of turned about 18 months old you realize the absolute carnage he creates Mm. and getting out actually provides him with a change yeah but also means less work for yourself oh yeah like and, you know it will probably change as the months and you know years roll by but that's just how i've always been like right it, now it fits you quite well yeah yeah it, it, it's it's good at the moment because I, I had that work I, I was still working from home up until a couple of weeks ago so I, you know, for me, not really an awful lot change other than the fact that I didn't have the people around me at work to chat to, but yeah, yeah. they were they were on a conference call all day. Yeah. So if you needed anybody, any idea, they were right there. Um, but when that was then taken away and I was told that we were being placed on furlough, that for the first couple of days did take a little bit of getting used to, um, actually being at home with him all day. And not being able to have somewhere where you can just go and just yeah. whatever. But now I'm in such a routine and a way of doing things that I'm okay. I'm, yeah, yeah. I, I feel absolutely fine. But I do 100% get why some people are really struggling with it. Um, you know, like my brother-in-law has been so desperate for the news that he, want, he wants to go back to work because, because he enjoys that social part of it so much. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the news today was just like you know devastating like my, my wife read out what he said in the you know in the group chat and he's just you know he's frustrated yeah you know, i can imagine a lot of people are <laughs> really yeah. struggling you know? yeah i i, I mean like I, I know people this week that have only just been furloughed and they've been furloughed till the end of may so like i don't think we can get away from the fact that this will probably take a while yeah um to get through and i think it's about finding things that you enjoy and finding things to keep you sane um like myself i've started trying to cook um yeah do more in the kitchen that's been like my big thing that i've taken on and i've made some really nice food and that's all been with the help of hello fresh where they deliver your meal box to you every week but like, i i couldn't 
I'd struggle with that you asked me to do beans on toast, but like, then like I've since then I've done like roast dinners and all sorts like beyond what's actually in the box and like yeah. I, it, like I used to be dreadful with cooking. I used to like worry relentlessly about timings and like making sure things were cooked thoroughly and stuff. But I've actually helped myself for all of that. Um, like the more I've done it, the more comfortable I've got with it, and like yeah. it's given me some time to focus on something and uh, like. I've been I've enjoyed doing that. Um, like I kind of think like you just got to make the most of the time that you've got to try and do something. I think if I was younger, I probably would have like. There's loads of opportunity to like learn new stuff, new skills, like loads of courses and that are being given out for free. Yeah. I think if I didn't have children, didn't have that commitment, now would be like the most incredible time to give yeah. an opportunity to do something. Yeah, I mean, that is the thing at the moment, like, you know, he takes up the majority of my day, which is yeah. absolutely fine. This is what I've, you know, I'm, I'm loving every second of it. Yeah, yeah, 100%. You know, so, but he does take up, you know, the majority of my day and you are constantly on edge whenever you put him to sleep that he's going to be waking up in a bit. So yeah. then, then finding, right, I've got potentially a half an hour window that he might be asleep. Right, what jobs can I get done around the house? Yeah, right. something needs to be washed up. We need to tidy up. We need to do this. We need to get him prepped for whenever he does. You know, when he does wake up, and then you're then starting another two, or three, uh, you know, two, <laughs> two or three hour like window of when he's then going to be awake again. So, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's um, it, it uh, the opportunity to learn something new. You know, potentially, I would like to do something around football. That would be nice. Um, you know, which oh, learning something about football, James. But um, it's the only thing I have an interest in. Other yeah. than, you know, NFL and whatever. But I, I'm absorbing so much NFL content that you know, I'm, I'm happy with that. But you know, potentially something in football would be interesting to learn about. Um, but. I just don't know. I don't know where I fit it into my day at the moment. Do you know what I mean? But you are right. If you are of a certain age or, you know, you don't have that commitment in your life, now is the perfect opportunity to, to sit down and make the most of your day rather than just, you know, playing games or watching TV and boxing, et cetera. Actually do something. Yeah, yeah. and I think it's an odd one because, like, obviously, like, videos and stuff were something that I was starting to really make progress with like with the help of um my colleagues like with what i was doing at stowe yeah um so i've lost i wouldn't say i lost all passion for doing it but i lost the motivation to do it as soon as the the the, the season kind of got cancelled yeah. i'm still sitting on two or three videos that i need to do but i can't find the motivation to do them but I've got the motivation to do something completely different. And it's I'm frustrated that like all the decisions that have been made and stuff have like sapped that energy from me. Yeah. Um that, to do things. Because obviously know. that is a massive part of your life, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, totally. Going on the stove. That that must be again, has that taken a by the sounds of things, you're still not over it. Has, I that, has it has it massively had an impact on what you're thinking? You know, it's not like I'm not going to pretend like it's not disappointing and everything, but I'm. It's not. I'm not disappointed for myself. And everything else. I'm disappointed for what, all of the effort that everyone else is trying to put in there. Yeah, yeah. And like what that, what what this means for them, and uh, yeah, I suppose that's like you know. I don't really want to talk too much about football tonight, but I think that's where my frustration comes from, and. Well, you know, you are okay to talk about it in this one because it does play a massive part of your life. Do you know what I mean? Your whole Saturday and potentially one day during the week was yeah. focused around a football club. It yeah, was yeah. focused on being part of that community. So having that taken away is a big part of your life. Yeah. Um, uh, so, you know, that is that is acceptable to talk about. I, I think the, the thing is with it is it's not only a... Um, it's it's not just like doing the videos and stuff. It's the community aspect of it, mm. um, and, and things that uh, are, are linked to it. That you know, there's there's so much more um, involved that, than just turning up and like. I, I don't actually record the games myself. I just deal with the technical stuff and like the, someone else records them for me. 
Um, yeah. And then I, I sort of do the, the bits behind the scenes, but it's just being involved with everyone and finding out, you know, how, it's being helpful. Yeah. <laughs> giving something uh, back to people. Um, yeah. And it's, it's just frustrating that, that there's no, there's, there's no way to do any of that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Cause that, that's the thing I, I was, I was just about to get myself into a position where I was going back to recording as well. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. We spoke about it. Didn't we? Yeah. The, I, I was on the verge of buying new equipment um, with Adam's help. Um, yeah. I, we were talking about it and I sent over loads of links to him. I said, right, get it ordered next few weeks. I'm making a comeback. And then all of this stuff then suddenly got very, very serious very quickly, didn't it? That was then very, it was put on pause. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it's such a shame because I finally felt right. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm now in a position mentally where I can leave, um, leave my son for the afternoon and know that he's going to be okay. Because if I'm being completely honest, I was really struggling mentally to, to detach myself from him. Yeah. Um, I was wanting to absorb as much time with him as I possibly could. That's hard. You don't get it back, do you? Sorry? You don't get that time back, do you? So it's quite well, hard, and everyone tells you that as well. This is exactly it. Um, and that is why there was next to no content on the channel for so, you know for such a long time. It was because I had zero interest in doing it because I wanted to spend every second with him. Yeah. Um, and... As I said, I finally got myself into a position mentally to go back, and then this all then happened. Um, and I think really that is what has kick started the podcast again is because I want to keep my brain engaged with this side of things. I still want to be able to learn different things, I want to be able to talk to people, I want to have that communication. And you know, from your aspect of it as well, it's come at a good time that you can still be involved in stuff as well. Um, and it can just keep us both in the loop. Um, I think as well, what this has made me realise, and like, I think uh, what what I'd like to uh, think is that other people can start to realise this as well, is that this is like a, a really good opportunity for people to do stuff like this, start a YouTube channel up themselves. Like, it's not complicated to start a YouTube channel, but everyone yeah. having smartphones these days. Like, yeah. Start recording a podcast, and it's made me realise that I don't know why we made such an effort about recording it last time because this is so easy. Yeah, well, I think I think I was so focused on it being such a visual thing that I wanted people to be able to see our reactions and how we were talking to certain bits and pieces. Yeah. Um, whereas what this has actually made me realise is that people don't care whether or not it's an, a visual thing or whether or not it's an audio thing. They just yeah. want to have something where they can relate to the person that they're looking at. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, um, you know, we, we spent so much time and effort, didn't we? That first night when we were sitting down and we we're thinking, how are we going to record this both ends and then put this all together? And we said, well, we, we must've been doing it for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half thinking about it. And then I don't know who, had even longer. Yeah. who had the brainwave of, Oh, let's just do it by Skype. Yeah. Oh, how do you record via Skype? Oh, there's an internal way of doing it. And it's just, you know, it's the it's the simplest way for us to be able to do it at the moment, but it works. It really, really works. So, you know, it makes sense to be able to do it. But as I said, I'm glad I've got it because it's something that, again, is is occupying quite a lot of my day because I'm then thinking about, right, who's the next guest? Who are we then getting on? What can we talk about? I need to research that. I need to look into these kind of things. I need to learn about that sort of stuff. And then, you know, again, yeah. with you, we're we're back and forth, aren't we, all the time? Yeah, constantly. And at the minute, it's quite good because it's different ideas and stuff like that for yeah for how we'll sort things out. And I like that. Yeah, it's it's you know, I said it's occupying my mind, especially. I don't know about you. You're probably exactly the same, aren't you? It's just, it's just giving you something to. Uh, well, to I, I, what I was going to say is that it kind of gives you uh, points. Um, in the week to look forward to, which I think are important. But if, yeah. if that's the one thing I'd say to anyone like that's listening now, that's listening because they're just at a bit of a loss in terms of what's doing stuff. Find something that gives you some some points. But like, I think I said in an earlier podcast, like the only way I was tracking my week was by working out which day was bin day. 
<laughs> before all of this, right? So let's let's try and think of something positive uh, uh, and think of something to look forward to that you enjoy doing. And if it's this, just having a chat and like speaking about football and stuff, like the, what I'm learning is that I think before we've been like, oh, what would we do if the, if the season's not on and stuff? There is no season now. There's still plenty to talk about. You can yeah. you can make it work. Uh, you can find people that want to talk football with you, and it turns out that people really miss football, and that that gives you even more more things to talk about. It's just finding something that you've got in common with people. Yeah, really. And I think I, I think as well because we've had this chucked at us and whatever, but it is still okay to talk about these sort of things. Do you yeah, know? What I, mean? I think it's okay to admit that you're like struggling and stuff with it as well. And um, but I, I have someone that I talk to every like sort of couple of weeks about things over the phone about it all and um I, I was sort of speaking to them a couple of days ago and they they uh, yeah they they sort of said that everyone is struggling and just to know that if you're struggling you're not the only one that is is, is quite a nice thing to hear anyway yeah and you know our our dms are open you know i mean if you if you if you are then it's absolutely okay to contact both of us, I think Adam will agree with that one as well. Like, I'm willing to have anyone on here that wants to talk about football or not even, you know, any sport or whatever. If you want to come on, have a chat with us. Yeah. Like, it's, I think it's a good thing to do and it's good to, like, make a little community up as well. Um, yeah. It's yeah. been one of the positive things that I think I can draw out of all of this. I don't know how many weeks we've been doing this for consistently now. I'd just suggest it's about three, three um, or four. Yeah, I reckon, yeah, I reckon about that now. Um, and already there's I've spoken to some great people and I've spoken to people that I've only spoken to on Twitter before and like it's great to have that like yeah yeah I mean the amount of messages that I've had um, you know direct messages on Twitter um, especially where people have just been reaching out just to ask how we are yeah just, you know just not not anything to do with the podcast it's just been you know, thanks. Been watching your videos for a long time. Just want to check in, see how you're actually doing. Um, that that kind of thing's nice. Do you know what I mean? That that that's the whole reason why we're in the community that we are. We're not. It's not just something that we just shove a video on because that's the latest thing to do and it's the cool thing to do and you know whatever. <laughs> don't don't do it for the money. Do it for the the labour of love as such. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you, you do it because of the people that you interact with. It's not yeah. as you know for as you said, monetary gains, is it really? No, for for me, it's like if there's something. Very few people actually are able to work within. Um, I suppose this is like the underlying thing of everything that we've said, really, and rounds it off as a topic. Like, mm. very few people are able to work in a job that they can say, "Yeah, that's truly what I love and truly what I want to do." Yeah. But social media and other forms allow you to express that if you can try and find the motivation to pick it up and do it yourself. And like, I've got to admit, like sometimes I'll sit down to record these and I think I just really I can't I can't do it. Mm. haven't got the motivation to do it but if you can struggle through that first bit you'll feel a lot better about it afterwards um, yeah to, to be honest like you know you re you really will and um y y y find find what it is that you love doing and and find a way of putting it out there don't don't hold back off it yeah yeah definitely so um you said you said that you were finding um other things to kind of keep you occupied in the moment um yes yeah, let's what, talk about that. Yeah, what what are you? What kind of things are you doing then, other than the cooking side of things? I mean, uh, well, I'd love you to hear what other people are doing as well. So let's you've know. you've convinced me. I think I've got to admit this chat. This this started off a few weeks back. When I was talking to Jack Ainsley, and um, he he sent me a message saying that he was at home. He wanted to play a uh, football manager, and he right. wanted me to uh, find him a laptop that would that would play it. And like, I, I, I don't, like I don't. Jack's not all that technically minded, but I'm sure he won't mind me admitting. Uh, <laughs> on and, and like, so I was helping him out and was trying to source something, and we sorted it out. Like after a little bit of turn and throwing, uh, and I was like, oh, I can't play football manager anymore. Like, I'm still of the mindset of Championship Manager 0102. 
Like, yeah, okay, okay. That's still my god tier game. Like, you know, <laughs> I, I it sort of set me up on that. I could play it for hours. Yeah. And um, so I sort of said, I can't be bothered to sort of manage the intricacies of players' social circles. I have yeah. no interest in, in, in like running training sessions. Yeah, yeah. I want a transfer budget, a squad, some tactics, and some games. That's that's all I want. <laughs> you can take everything else out of the game. That's all I'm interested in. Yeah. Um, and so you know, I spoke to him for a bit, and then everyone else started playing it, and I kept seeing things pop up online. Yes. Uh, and then we were talking about it. Yeah. Uh, like I, we've been talking about it at length, I think, really over a few different things. And yeah. I just keep seeing screenshots online of Football Manager, and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to buy it. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, I got a football manager a few days ago, um, and that's that's what I'm doing in the background. Uh, football manager is on, and um, are you actually playing it right now? Yeah, I, unbelievable. I, yeah, I just ticking through as I go along, uh, keeping my mind busy. Um, but I, I've already found things with the guy. I don't know about you, James. At press conferences, boring. Like I, I don't know if there's any benefit to me attending a press conference on football manager. I, I do them just to be controversial. <laughs> just because, like, I just, you know, they'll go, oh, what do you think of uh, such and such? I'll just be like, yeah, he's a, he's a, yeah, he's a, <laughs> well. <laughs> it, it just annoys me that you just get poked and prodded about your your form and everything else. It's just like. Oh, but that yeah. is the life of a football manager. Do you know what I mean? That is all they get all the time. It's not, it's real. But That's it, real. It, I don't know if that's what I wanted to do, though. I, that's the thing. That, that didn't fit in with my criteria of the like four key things that I wanted to do. Well, you can simplify the version of the game, you know. Yeah, well, I know. You can open it up and just press the storm out button. Well, no, I meant, I meant, the, actual, <laughs> I meant the actual game game itself. You can set up to be very basic. There's like a football manager touch as well, isn't there? I'm sure loads of people that listen to this are, uh, are probably playing football manager at the moment. Um, it's my lifeline always has been throughout my entire life football manager has been my go to it's the only game other than I stopped playing FIFA maybe about 5 or 6 years ago um, and I occasionally oh, FIFA. FIFA has got so bad and I occasionally bought Madden and I occasionally bought like an F1 game back when but Football Manager has been and always will be the game that every single year I purchase without fail. Like, no questions asked. I don't care what the money is. I just chuck it at SI. They can have it, as far as I'm concerned, because the game is unbelievable. I, it, I just, I love it. I can't talk highly enough of it. And it, it occupies so much of my of my time, and I'm, I'm so happy that it does. I'm not... <laughs> so, I'm not I mean, like... In con- contrary to what I said earlier, I-, I have had every single version since FM12. Have you? But I have played them, each one of them. Now, I- there's not many of them where I've played many more than five or six times. Oh, I've got to um, load up my, my Steam games and just kind of show you or tell you the hours. But my, my hours on, I, I loaded up uh, Championship Manager 2006 on my laptop the other night just to see if I fancied it, see, yeah, if, yeah. I was, see if I was up for it. And my game time on my save on that was 247 hours um, on that save. Uh, and I thought, like, I'm going into it, and it, it's like, it's all irrelevant to me because I haven't been pay- playing it for so long. Okay, so do, do, do you want to hear my hours? Yeah, go on. All right, so FM11 was 593. That is the equivalent of 24 days. Do you close the game, though? Yeah. Oh, my goodness, James. Right, FM12, it gets worse, was 852 hours, which is the equivalent of 35 and a half days. Um, FM13, FM we went back to 545, so that was a bad year. Oh, terrible, uh, terrible, terrible year that one. <laughs> 14 was 533. Actually, FM 12. Yes, I remember FM 12 was my uh, was my Dortmund and Villarreal save. I really got into <laughs> that. I managed, I, I managed both of them, and that's why I had so many hours. I remember now. Um, 
610 on FM 15, 649 on 16, 818 on 2017. This was probably when I was uploading to YouTube, actually. Yeah, that would have been, right. wouldn't it? Okay, this is, the, this is the worst one. All right, this was when I was off work for a long time, bear in mind. I was off work for six months, right? 1,460. Was that in 19 or 18? That was 18. 18 wasn't even that much of a good game. So that is Nin the equivalent of 60 days. I spent a two-month solid block playing FM 18, and Just then we were oh, back that, 791 make... last year, and I've done 607 so far this year. And considering the game doesn't come out till October, that's a massive amount, James. 607 divided by 24, that is the equivalent of 25 days solid I've played Football Manager this year. It's only been and out six, six months. Yeah, and I'm so proud of that. So proud of that. Oh, that's the, like this game will irritate me before I, I finish a season. <laughs> I, I, I can tell you now, and I'll never go back and look at it again. Like I, I'm managing Ipswich. I don't know who your main save is, whatever. Um, Cheltenham manager at the moment. And I, I thought, well, Ipswich is a club I know. Uh, yeah. And I thought, let's see if I can win a UEFA Cup equivalent with them. That was that was what I thought would be. You'd have to laugh. go back in time to do that, mate. Well, you know, I mean, the equivalent of what that cup is now, whatever <laughs> Europa, whatever yeah. it is. I won't yeah. aim for the Champions League because that would just be daft. But I mean. I'll batter a team 4-0 one game and then I'll lose 1-0 to Wimbledon or something stupid. Like, there's no... That's real life, though. <laughs> oh, it's just... It's... It, unlike the temptation to get on the data editor is, un <laughs> is unreal. No. You haven't got that, have you? The in-game editor. Yeah, I have got it, but I don't... No, know. no, no, I've no. Got... no and then, like, what's this other thing? I got someone in on loan. Absolute baller. I, f I pressed the wrong button and didn't register him. No, I I, I question people who you who have the in-game editor available. I, I think I've got an editor available of some sort. Anyway, I'm not using it, but it, it, I can't imagine it'll be too long before I think, oh, this will be a laugh and just bang a ton of money. Yeah. Uh, on it, like, but like you know it, what what would happen if i if i took a division 2 side and gave them a million pounds oh like, yes the classic fm experiment that everybody does every single year and uploads to youtube yes classic i don't know if it's like a classic fm experiment or the absolute hallmark of someone that's crap at the game no it's the hallmark of somebody who wants to boost the numbers on their channel it's just the classic it's an absolute classic absolute um, clickbait Oh yeah, hundred percent. You you don't you know I I was not with a billion I pounds. To, I used to deal with transfers. I'd be like, oh, this transfer's just happened. What would happen on Football Manager if we did that? And yeah. it was like the worst type of content that I've ever done in my life. But that is the ultimate clickbait, isn't it? It's well, what people want to see. So you just like, oh yeah, what would happen if I gave such and such this amount of money, which is never going to happen? It's like. Just yeah, it's just it's lazy content, but it brings in views and people enjoy it. So you know, I mean, it's, there's an audience for it. But but yeah, I think I think the other thing of the game that I'm finding as well is that it's not particularly quick to play. Oh like, no, if you've got loads of leagues loaded up, it does take a hell of a amount of time. I mean, I have a, I've got a fairly decent PC. Like I'm using the PC that I used to do my video editing and stuff on, so it's it's got enough power to run this game which i think would probably run on a potato if it needed to um <laughs> looking at the graphics and everything but it just takes ages <laughs> and i get I, I get it's processing a lot of data and stuff but i didn't bother chucking too many leagues on because i knew i'd get bored anyway right. um so you know it's exciting when you score a goal. I will give it that more so than any other football manager game that I've, that I've played. <laughs> well, you know, I do a little fist pump when Norwood nods home. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know how much it's going to grip me. I, I don't. I can't just play this in the day. Whereas I can pick up my Nintendo Switch and I can just play it in the day for fifteen minutes and put it down. Oh no, you can't do that with Football Manager. No. So like, I, I'm on my Nintendo Switch a lot at the minute. Um, so that's something else that's occupying a lot of your day, is it? 
yeah, a hundred percent. Like I'm trying to do things like because I've got bad eyes at the minute, which is the reason why I'm off work. I'm trying to do things that are focused around screen work to actually get my my time around screens more comfortable and so I know when I'm more prepared to go back as such. Like at the minute if I sit back from my laptop, I can't read any of the text on there whatsoever. That's um nice. but if I'm up close, I'm all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I've been using my Nintendo Switch and playing a couple of games on there that I really like, and I bought the new Animal Crossing. So when I run, that's my kind of game. That says everything about me. I don't even know what that is, but I have seen it a lot. So it, it, you should watch a YouTube video of it. I mean, this is the most general chat we're ever going to get for a podcast. Basically, <laughs> it's a game I've discovered where you collect bugs and fish, and you do some gardening. It's quite important to do weeding. Um, you know, it sounds you do... like um, oh, what was that thing on Facebook that was there years ago? Well, like Farmville or whatever. It Farm... was. Yeah, it sounds like that. That was dead popular, wasn't it, back in the day? Farmville. Oh, I used to love Farmville. Oh, wait, wait, were you a player? Were you? Sorry, were you a big player? If that were, you? Oh, I was obsessed with it for months, and then it suddenly clicked. What the hell am I doing? Can you remember when people used to use Facebook to send requests to each other for coins and stuff for games? Yes, yeah. But that, that was absolute B grade Facebook. That was. Yeah, like, that was like that was the B row of Facebook, wasn't it? A hundred percent. But like, yeah, I I, I quite like it. There's, there's, you'd probably like it. There's another game that, that that is about farming and stuff called Stargy Valley, which is also really chilled. Which you'd probably like if you're into that. But right. um. Animal Crossing is it's insanely good. Yeah, I, I, you know, I I think I've gone past this thing. It's an age thing, but like, I can't be doing with like Call of Duty and stuff. Playing Call of Duty is the equivalent of me going to a nightclub nowadays. It's just full of young kids that are too trendy <laughs> and know too much about the scene by comparison. Yeah, like if I go on Call of Duty, I die sooner than I live. I, I spend more time pressing the respawn button. I can't be doing with it. I just want to. I don't want to play online. I just want to be on my own where I can win in peace. Yeah, my um, do you know? I, I honestly thought I'd be watching more things like Netflix shows and stuff like that, but I'm not. I'm either I'm either watching YouTube videos because YouTube is just kind of like blown up recently, hasn't it? Like yeah, the amount, the amount of content that I'm seeing at the moment has just gone crazy. From from a YouTube perspective, the YouTubers that are you know they. It's the wrong term to use, maybe, but they are rubbing their hands at the moment. They are, it's the perfect opportunity for them. I've been watching rock. some real funny stuff on YouTube, like some some really big YouTubers, like, that, <laughs> like just make real clickbaity videos. But some of them are so funny. Uh, there's someone called Will N.E. Like, I don't know yes. if you know who he is. Yes, some of the stuff he has put up has been hilarious. They have got into a load of Facebook buy and sell groups the other oh. day. Right. Uh, one of the groups they got into was carp buy and sell and oh my goodness like the the content is so nonsensical but it's just funny like yeah. they're, they're making humor out of things that shouldn't be funny Sen- sending messages to people about buying their carp like wh- that shouldn't be funny but it's hilarious yeah but you see loads of youtubers you haven't uploaded for months all of a sudden they're back on the scene and they're really taking advantage yeah. of it and stuff like that but yeah or launching you... like big like like personalities on other things are suddenly launching a big youtube profile i'm finding yes i i saw uh well my my wife was listening to a cooking live thing on instagram yesterday and who was that with was that with barry lewis no it was some it was somebody from um loose women oh goodness and all she did for the first five minutes of the video was promote this YouTube channel. But the way she's talking about it was just so funny. It was just like, she has no idea what she's talking about. Yeah. And all she's doing is, yeah, we've, we've set up a, a, a YouTube, um, YouTube, page, a, a YouTube page. Um, you lot should go over there and click on it. What do they have to do? And then someone just went subscribe and she went, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to that and subscribe. And I'm like, Oh my god, you're just like clinging on to anything to stay to stay yeah. relevant. Because but, obviously mainstream TV is just like completely gone to gone to, gone the, to part, the planet. Eh? Yeah, really, really has. They are you, it's amazing how all of those people because again, she sat there this afternoon. I was I was playing football manager whilst a little man was asleep, so she's like, I'm just gonna watch a program to your mind. I was like, I don't care, I'm on football manager, do what you want. Yeah. yeah. Um, she's stuck on Jamie Oliver. 
Yeah. And he's filming from home on his phone and he has no idea where he's looking at the sound. On his phone? Like, it's just an absolutely god awful video. And I'm just thinking all these people that have relied on everyone else to do the work for him. He's got the money to get a decent camera. Yeah, I know. It's, but it's just funny watching it. It's, it's a terrible thing to say, but it's funny watching them struggle. Well, yeah, all these people that are pampered. Yeah, like, they're pampered. They have people doing everything for them. They have no idea. They just turn up, do what they have to do, and then go home. And now, all of a sudden, they're relying on themselves to get a program sorted. And it's just funny. Like, I, it was I, terrible. I watch, it was um, so bad. I watch a channel called How Ridiculous, uh, where yes. they, just, they just do silly things all the while. Off um, towers and onto trampolines and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like, and they've they've just got this like massive trampoline custom made for them, which has been it's in, made some incredible content. But I love it because they've just done it all themselves. Like they've learned how to film it. They've mm. just gone out and got a ton of GoPros and found different ways to make it look amazing. Yeah, like that's exactly like the kind of content I want. I, I, I look yeah, on that's um, YouTube though, isn't it? Do yeah, you know hundred percent. YouTube is people teaching themselves, and what do you, I don't know if you've noticed it as well, but there are certain people who go on YouTube, and when they do break into mainstream, yeah. their content massively drops. Yeah, because they go from what they were doing, which was the unique selling, to you know they had their own, you know, you what you was putting on a USP. Yeah, they had it, and then they get rid of it, and all of a sudden, the extra people come in, and they're not recording the stuff themselves anymore. Do you know what I mean? Their content then, um, then kind of suffers as a result. You can tell the people as well that know how to use an editing program, can't you? Yeah, like yeah, it's like some of the effects and stuff that they put on are just ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> um, but I watch uh, Barry Lewis, who does loads of cooking stuff. I'd really recommend him to anyone. Like, because he just does, he does all sorts of stuff as well as like doing jumbo things. So like oh. he'll just make an enormous Kit Kat and stuff like that. He's he's a really funny guy. Um, his channel started being called My Virgin Kitchen because he had no idea how to cook years ago, and he's taught himself and made a full on career out of it. So it's yeah. like absolute big up to him because it's all been done through YouTube. His yeah. entire career has been shaped through YouTube, but he's never had his channel taken over so that people filmed for him. Or anything yeah. like that. What what's happened instead um, is that he's been able to raise enough money to um, pay for someone to edit the videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And make them look better. Um, so it's quite interesting to see the path that some some of them take and the changes that happen. But I, I've been watching tons of YouTube. I'm not gonna. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. Like yeah, YouTube, FM, and Simpsons Hit and Run. Well, you've, re- you've re- been playing re- it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Replugged in the PS2. Yeah, we um, spoke about this the other day. I didn't know if you'd actually got around to playing it or not. I mean, yeah, yeah. I've um, I've got through. I think three levels, and I'm now on to level four. So I'm now playing with um, with a poo. So, so like the the if you're playing with a poo. Uh, the, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh dear, that the first childish part of me. Is it the question I'd ask? I always say this about retro games. Like I'm massively into retro games. I've got all sorts like around me. Yeah, is the memory better than the reality? Uh, not with the Simpsons hit and run. I think the thing that I'm finding about it is because obviously I haven't played on a console for, for such a long time, like Xbox, PlayStation, whatever, is that I'm still getting used to the uh, the, the the controller, and I'm, right. I'm I'm finding myself getting more frustrated because I can't do the things that I used to be able to do when I was in my teens. So just like the ease of like navigating around. A street and genuinely, and genuinely, up. I think that comes with as you get older. I think you just forget how to use your fingers. No, but it's just, I just, it's really weird. Like the simple driving things, like I'm, I'm crashing into everything, and it's taking me about four or five goes to get a, any sort of mission done. Yeah. On there, whereas I know that years and years ago, I could have just done that within like one, maybe two goes at a push. It wouldn't have been an issue. No, but I'm like, I'm just, I'm there all the time, and like my wife can just hear me shouting obscenities from like upstairs or whatever. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I don't know. It, I, I really enjoy the game. I'm not, you know, I don't know whether or not it was as good 
as back when, but yeah, I think back when I had two brothers who were competing over the console as well. So I don't know whether or not you, re- I, I could ever really enjoy a game when I was a kid. Like, like, I remember the game, but after like twenty minutes, it was like, oh right, it's my turn now. Yeah, so Do you, you know you what I mean. So time, I, never really, I never really had that. Um, I was lucky enough to get my Nintendo Switch at Christmas, and my usage of it has been very limited like because of my eyes and stuff um but that is an absolute machine for just bringing back old games yeah like it hasn't really got that many unique new titles for itself but the thing i'm enjoying doing on there is playing old games that have been re-released on it yeah Uh, i'm currently playing diablo 3 on it which i told you about the other day which is a game that i know you've got no interest in whatsoever but i love it like i could play it for hours and hours and hours and i have done um like it's one of those things where I can literally just complete it in in a sitting. I can sit down. I can complete the whole base game. Yeah, and I'm done. It, yeah, I, it, in one go. It wasn't my kind of game. So it's a dungeon crazy. crawler type thing, like yeah. Uh, uh, and but that was released in like two thousand and eight, I believe. Right. And here I am playing it, sort of twelve years later, and still. Well, it's still as good as when I first played it. Yeah. Well, I've got um, I've got Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Um, what a game that is! No um, one can argue with that. Which um, which when I'm which when I get when I do eventually have enough, I can't complete a level or I just get bored of Simpsons Hit and Run. I will be moving on to Vice City. Um, is it, it PS2 you're playing on? Yeah. I oh, should try and get a Tony Hawk game. Well, do you know what? I I feel quite guilty about ordering in at the moment. Um, I don't want any parcels coming to my door because I just think, and I know it might be like the most stupid way of thinking at the moment, but I think that delivery people have got enough going on at the moment. I don't want to add to their workload just because I'm bored and want something else to do. I'm just, I'm really, I haven't ordered a single thing since this all started. Do you know what? I have about four parcels a day come to my house. Yeah, I, I know. You, I know you do. I, I constantly have stuff, and I haven't been ordering off Amazon lately. I just have other stuff that just. I, that's, I, that's my only. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just like. I never really buy things from the shop ever. I don't use cash or whatever. I don't, it, just everything I buy just comes off the internet. Yeah. No, I just I I don't know. I I think it's just I don't know. It's just something that I've just been thinking about over the past couple of weeks because I really wanted to order um, a Game Boy Color. <laughs> I wanted to order um, Pokemon Yellow. I found one in my shed the other day. Yeah, really? Yeah. I found a Game Boy in my shed the other day. Um, I think it was a Game Boy Pocket, which I reckon I must have ordered off eBay years ago. Uh, But unfortunately, it's missing the battery cover, so I might bodge some batteries in with sellotape because I'm not precious about things that are that old and have been in my shed. Right. Um, uh, But I think if I can get the original, like, is it Pokemon Blue and Red that was on that? Yeah, there was blue and red, and then they introduced yellow, where you had Pikachu right from the very beginning, and then you collected um, um, Squirtle, Bulbasaur, yeah. and uh, Charmander. So I've never really got into Pokemon games, but one of the ones I'm, it's not something I wouldn't mind getting for Switch. But then people say they're not that good on there. Yeah, I don't know. I've seen. I've seen. Um, you probably don't know. Do you know Jack, mate, on YouTube? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's been doing that. He's been playing Pokemon a lot. He posts about it on his uh, on Instagram stories and whatnot. Did, but, did you ever used yeah. to play uh, Plants vs Zombies? No, no. So that was a cool game. But um, randomly on YouTube, someone came up and we talk about doing series. Like we've both had like the chats before about doing new series and stuff on on YouTube and that and trying yeah. to do something together, haven't we? Um, this guy has done 800 episodes of Plants vs. Zombies on his channel. Jesus. So if anyone's like looking for a playlist, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but just look at 800th episode Plants vs. Zombies and Mental. That is insane. Um, no, I don't know. I, 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 people might well be interested in doing that, but yeah, or or, or interested in us doing something. I don't know. Well, I don't know how we'd, how we'd do it, but yeah, that might be something potentially. But yeah, I've I've enjoyed this, mate. It's been good. I mean, like I say, it's it's all about finding distraction. That would be my message. Yeah. To anyone right well, now, find so, some distraction. 
So what are you guys doing at the moment to pass the time? Have you taken up anything new like Adam has for, with his cooking, etc.? Um, are you just, are you still working? Because there might well be a lot of people that listen to this that are still working, that aren't in a position to be able to do that. Um, what are you doing to occupy your time? Let us know um, in the comments section. It would be really interesting to hear um, what, what you guys are up to. Has anyone else picked up any retro games? Yes. What other yes. retro games are people playing? Yeah, yeah. Let's hear about it. Um, another one that I've actually got, which I'm not, I, I only, in, I was only interested in because I just wanted to like press buttons randomly on it and just see what I could do. I've got SmackDown versus Raw, <laughs> which oh. is is in the is in the collection of games which are in this um, like just plastic bag, which I am, I will, I will make my way through them because. How long this all is going to last for, I don't know. But yeah, let us know about your, your retro games as well. I'm quite jealous because I never had a PS2 like when they came out. I owned one periodically when I was collecting consoles, but I don't have it anymore. Right. Um, but never really played on it. Um, yeah, that was my go-to. PlayStation 1 and then PlayStation 2. Um, I, I slowly got into Xbox One. No, Xbox. it wasn't Xbox One back then. It was Xbox 360, wasn't it? Well, there was Xbox and Xbox 360 was the, the, the one. white one, and then Xbox One is the one that's like, you've got an Xbox now, haven't you? I've got an Xbox. Um, I've got an Xbox One. Yeah. But I don't have any games for it. What? No, I, I just I used it for the Blu-ray player. I got it for free off my brother, so I just used it for playing DVDs. I don't have any games for it. <laughs> I've never. I, I can't remember. Oh, what a revelation. Before. I can't believe I can't remember the last time I bought an Xbox game. Honestly, can't. I just don't. I just don't have any time for it. I don't play it. Like I said, FM is the only game I play. Well, my dad came around before lockdown. Uh, was on to help me sort out. Uh, gave me a bit of motivation to help me sort out one of the rooms in my house. And I've, I've gone through a load of games in there. And I got a PS4 when it got launched. Right. I on launch in there at midnight to pick it up. It was a proper sad case back then. Like. <laughs> Uh, this was before Finley, like everything. Yeah. Um, and I had games that I got on that release night that were still sealed in their cellophane that I'd never opened. Yeah. And I think that was about five or I think it's been five or six years even since that launch. Wow. It's uh, it was, it was such a waste. Yeah. Such a waste. Oh, there we go. But yeah, let us know what you guys are up to at the moment. Um, I don't know when we're next going to be doing one of these because we may have secured a guest for Thursday's, uh, next week's Thursday's podcast. But we will announce details of that in due course. But if you've enjoyed this one, make sure you give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment and all that kind of stuff like that because then if we know that you guys enjoy it, we'll continue to do these kind of random chats um, as and when we do get chances to. But we are securing a lot of guests at the moment um as I said some of the names on there i can't wait to let you guys know about it we are working really hard aren't we adam to uh yeah to and if you the listener actually want a guest put it in the comments yeah and we'll see what we can do like, tag, I, them on, tag them on twitter yeah, them, keep that, telling them you've that's got to the come thing. on the podcast you've got to come on the podcast and it doesn't matter who they are if it's someone that's just a fan of the game to someone that's a uh, director of football at a club like if there's something that you you know someone that you want on like just let me let us know and we'll see what we can do because i didn't think that like a couple of people that have been interested so far would would necessarily take us up on what we're doing but yeah. it's just like I, like again like the, what we're managing to secure and stuff is giving me motivation to want to do this and to also put better content out for you as yeah. well yeah definitely definitely so as i said get involved in the chat let us know as i said normal stuff hit the thumbs up leave a comment subscribe all that kind of jazz thank you very much adam for your time this evening and as always until we see each other next time on the channel adios mm -hmm.